Jules, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm basically just going to be showing you some eyeshadow basics that aren't too difficult. Like if there were different levels of like makeup difficulty, this would be like level easy. I just wanted to show you like some eyeshadow basics. I had a coworker of mine who requested this video. So girl, this is for you. If you have not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We can just go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so the first brush that I wanna talk about, um, I think, eh, I mean, you could probably do without this brush, but I personally really like it. I only use it for one thing personally, and that is this big fluffy brush. It is a round brush. It is a uh, Morphe M441, and I only use this for the transition. And that's going to be just this part right up in here, creating some depth in between your skin color and then your first eyeshadow that you're gonna use because you don't wanna go in directly with like a darker color. You kinda wanna gradually get in there. So this is the first brush that I use. The second brush that I really like using is this brush. It is slightly smaller. Here, I'll show you them together. So this was that first one here, and this is the second one. This is an M433 by Morphe. And this is a really good crease brush, and this I like to use right directly in the crease. It creates more of a definition than the other one. The other one's just kind of really fluffy. So just create more defined crease is what I use that for. Another blending brush that I like is gonna be this e.l.f. one. I don't like it as much as the Morphe one, but this is just, um, a, I guess, a more accessible option if you don't wanna get a Morphe brush. And then I have a couple other smaller um, blending brushes. These are just uh, $1 e.l.f. brushes. I have a bigger one here and then this smaller one here. So just depending on which size you need for how defined you want it to be, you would use these, these brushes. And then next I have a few shader brushes. So this is a Sonia Kashuk one. This is an elf. These both are elf ones. And this is also just depending on how defined you want it to be. Um, these are shader brushes that I usually use just on the lid. This is another brush. I use this, mm, I don't use it too often. This is a Morphe M432. I usually just use this on the bottom lash line if I'm trying to get some color like directly like on my lash line. That's basically all I use this brush for. And then last brush that I wanna talk about is gonna be this pencil brush. And this is, if you're doing like really defined work, you could do something on like the outer V here or like under the lash line. So those are the brushes that I use uh, in my everyday makeup routine. Granted, I don't always use all of them, uh, but I use a variety of them. I don't know, does that make sense? So, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of like get started with all these brushes and just show you a really easy makeup look using, well, I guess I'll try to use as many brushes as I can with this. So now the first thing that I personally like to do is to go ahead and prime my eyes and you could do that using an eyeshadow primer. I like the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, but I also really like using concealer because it makes my eyes exactly the same color as the rest of my face. If I don't use a concealer and I just use eyeshadow primer, that's still just gonna be like the same color as my skin and there's basically gonna be like this weird gap right here where there's like my real skin peeking through. It looks kind of weird. So I am just going to do a little bit of concealer. This is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my eyes. And I also like to set the concealer with a loose powder. And this is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. This is the lightest one. Not that the color really matters. But I'm just gonna use one of those shader brushes and just dip into the powder just to kind of set it. It's also really good if you're doing your eyeshadow before the rest of your makeup because if you do end up with any fallout underneath your eyes, it's really easy to clean up instead of you having to like try and wipe away the foundation and then reapply it. 
it's just not fun. So um, that's why we're doing our eyeshadow first. So today I'm gonna be using a very popular palette. I feel like a lot of people have this and it'd be a lot easier to show you how to do just really easy makeup looks with this. I just wanna talk about like the general areas of this palette. So to me, these first two colors are highlight shades, which are really good for like the inner corner and the brow bone. These next two shades are really great transition shades. And then this next row here are really good to deepen up the crease a little bit more. They're a little deeper than these two colors. And then you have the rest of these mattes that you can use to deepen up your crease even more. And these shimmer shades here, I would only use them on the lid. I wouldn't use them in the crease because I don't like the way that shimmers look in the crease. So that's basically how I use this palette. So first I'm gonna start off going in with this shade here, which is called, it's called MFEO. And I'm gonna use that first brush that we talked about, the M441, the super fluffy blending brush. You don't have to use this specific brush, just like a blending, a fluffy blending brush. All right, now that we're all close and personal, you can see every pore on my face. We are going to go into that color like I was saying, and we're going to go right in to the crease and a little bit above. Going like this windshield wiper motions and you'll notice that I'm using, I'm holding the brush toward the end of it. So that way I'm not like jamming it right in my eye. I mean, want to use it really lightly to just kind of put down some color there. Which I'll notice that the difference is slight, but that's the transition that you want. You don't want anything too harsh. Okay, next I want to go in with that second brush I talked about, the M433. Another thing that I also want to note, I'm sorry, there's a lot of side notes, but I want to note the different undertones and eyeshadows you, if you're doing a warm eyeshadow look, you only want to use warm undertones and that's going to be colors with, that have more of a yellowish tone to them. I think that's the best way to describe it. And like cooler tones are more pink. Like, let me see. I want to show you colors that are like sort of similar, but one's warm tone and one's cool tone. Okay. Well, let's look at these two colors right here. Okay, this color right here is a cooler tone, whereas this one is a warm tone. Ah, okay. So this eyeshadow palette, I think, is a great representation. Also really inexpensive. So you have two transition shades. This is a cooler one, and this is a warmer one. Whereas you see all these colors here are warm toned and the ones on this side are cool toned. I feel like I'm going on too much about this, but I just, there, you just don't want to mix the cool tone and the warm tones. That, that's all I'm trying to say. Cause it looks like a hot mess if you do. Okay. So I feel like warm tones are a little more popular right now. So I'm going to try and go for a more warm tone look. So I'm going to go in with that color with the M433 in that second color that I showed you, the color called Butter. And I'm going to put that right into the crease to deepen that a little bit more, but I don't want to go as high as the transition color because because I still want there to be that nice gradual fade. Still holding it towards the bottom, going very lightly. The difference, once again, you definitely want to make sure your eyes are even. I know some people do put tape on the sides of their eyes just to make it more sharp. I'm not too worried. 
about it, especially once again, because I'm doing my eyes before my foundation. So I can always clean it up later if I want to. Next, I think I want to go in with a smaller blending brush. This is the e.l.f. This is the bigger of the two that I showed you. We're going to go in with Roxanne, which is this color right here. Okay, so that came on a little more harsh than I wanted, but that's okay. So that's kind of how I wanted it to come on this eye. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean this brush off. We all make mistakes, okay? I'm gonna clean this brush off and just blend this end so that way it is not so harsh. If I notice the place is looking a little not blended, but I don't want to put my eyeshadow brush over there, I'll kind of just use my finger. You know, do what you gotta do. Okay, next I think I want to go ahead onto the lid. And I'm gonna use, honestly, like this is my favorite brush that I have found that I use for my lid when I'm using a shimmer. I used to use, or I tried using these, um, the Morphe N167, which is this brush. They look super similar, okay? But this brush obviously is a little longer and well, it's skinnier, but I don't know. I just, I feel like it creates, it blows it out. Like I always get shadow like under my eye with this brush and I bought two of them and I really don't like them. So I'm not going to recommend those. So I'm going to use this color, this color, this brush, and I am going to go into, I'm going to go into this color, which is right next to Roxanne. And this one's called Hillster. And I'm only going to use this color on the outer part of my eye. I got some on the brush, as you can see. And I'm going to use facial spray, which I guess you could use Water Fix Plus. You could use anything. And I'm just going to spray it because I always like to spray my, my shimmers because they come become a little bit more intense if you spray them. Do not do this with mattes. It does not work the same. So this I'm just going to put on the outer part right here. Trying to stay just on the lid and not going into the crease. for whatever reason whenever I do eyeshadow I really like having a darker shimmer here and sometimes I'll do three shades on the whole lid or sometimes I'll just do two but usually it's never just one that's just me and my style and you can do whatever you want but I'm gonna use that same brush and I'm gonna go into the color next to it called SBN, which is this color right here. As you can tell, I love these colors very much. I feel like I'm about to hit pan on this color and the one next to it. Okay. And when I'm going over the line for the two, I could just kind of like lightly brush it so that way it kind of merges them together without totally taking over. And real quick, I do want to show you the difference between what it looks like when you apply it wet like I just did and when you do it dry. 
Um, see, I can just see, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this is just not as intense as this is. Like I could probably build this up to be this completely dry, but I just feel like it's a lot quicker to just go ahead and spray your brush with eyeshadow on it. This makes it easier. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Much better. Okay. Oh! Getting fallout all over my face. I'm pretty much done with what I want to do to the top portion of my eye. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and then I will be back to do the bottom pop, the bottom. <laughs> I will be back to do the lower lash line. All right, so I have pretty much the rest of my face done except for the lower lash line and I feel like it looks so naked. I hate it. I used to wear my makeup like this where I just like didn't do anything on the lower lash line and I'm like kicking myself. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so going back in to the Jaclyn Hill palette, I'm gonna use that smaller of the two e.l.f. brushes. And I'm gonna go into that shade M-E-F-O, which was the transition shade that I used. And put that on the lower lash line, like so. And in the same way that I was defining the crease a little bit more, I'm going to kind of do the same thing with getting closer to the lower lash line. So I'm going to use that pencil brush and go into that show that, what did they use? Butter? Yeah, I think that's the color that I used. This is like going a little extra with the lower lash line. I don't normally go this in depth to it, but I'm just showing you once again with the brushes that I use. So I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna go into that shade in the middle called Roxanne. I'm gonna be real careful and get this right on the lash line. Kind of like stamp it on there. All right, I'm just gonna blend out this corner right here because I saw that there was a gap there. All right. Okay, so that's it for the lower lash line, but now I'm gonna go into using the highlighter that I used on the rest of my face and put that on the inner tear duct and on the brow bone. Today I used the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighter in Precious Petals. And I'm gonna use that really small shader brush. This is a Sonia Kashuk brush. And like I did with the shimmer shades, I'm going to spray it with the facial spray and go right into the tear duct right here. I don't want it to be blown out too much, so that's why I'm using such a small brush. So to have a lot more control of where I'm putting the product. I really like using the same highlight shade that I use on the rest of my face on the inner tear duct and on the brow bone, just so it makes it look more cohesive. This isn't necessarily eyeshadow related, but I normally do put mascara on my lower lashes. But before I do that, that's when I like to do my setting spray because if I put on setting spray after I do my lower lashes, I seriously get like so much black under my eyes. It's just like 
awful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then put lower mascara on and then we'll be done. I hope I helped explain the uses of some of the brushes that are out there because I know there are so many. I know I don't even have all of the brushes that, like even the different kinds of brushes that there are. There are so many and it is a lot to take in. So I totally understand how uh, it could be a really overwhelming. But if you in any way found this video helpful, if you could give it a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video.